She's the mother of six, a stand-up comic, and has just released her third book, Your Blue Flame, Drop the Guilt and Do What Makes You Come Alive. And until this Friday, she was the host of her own radio show on Sirius XM. She's leaving radio behind, and she's here tonight to tell us why. We'll also talk about her new book and this wild ride uh, of, that families are on during this pandemic. Please welcome, via Skype from Austin, Texas, Jennifer Fulweiler. Jen, thanks for joining me. Now, you started your radio show on Sirius in 2014, first as a weekly show, then it expanded to a daily show, two-hour show. Um, give me a sense of why you're quitting this radio show after six years and during a pandemic, well, no less. Raymond, the whole thing has been a wild ride. I don't know if I ever told you, but I never intended to do radio. And then I end up on the mm -hmm. station with broadcasters. Like, I admired Lena Rooley as a broadcaster for years. I, I never thought I'd be the show leading up to his. And so the whole thing was surreal. And if I've learned one thing from the fact that I never intended to go into radio, but I ended up in radio... When you feel like it's the right time to make a move and the doors seem to be opening and things seem to be working out, you've just got to do it. And I will be honest with you, Raymond, my, my plan of what I'm doing next is not fully formed, but it, it felt like it was the right time to move on, even though uh, I have just quit a very stable job in the middle of a global pandemic. Mm. Well, but you know, the, the, and, and I was your first guest on the show and your near last guest on the show uh, the other day. Are you nervous about this transition? I mean, it seems to me your life is maybe properly reflecting the title of your book. Uh, you know, Your Blue Flame really is about finding your reason. Uh, I want to read something from the book and then get your reaction to this. You write, when I was an atheist, I knew that writing was my blue flame. I'd started and stopped a bunch of writing projects, but none of them felt like they were going anywhere. This passion wasn't bringing the spark into my life. After my conversion, when I prayed for direction about what I was destined to do, instead of just thinking about what I personally wanted to do, I suddenly received clarity. Is that what's going on now? Clarity. That is exactly right. It's exactly right that I, I feel like God gives each one of us gifts that we're meant to share with the world, and it's not up to us uh, as to how we share it and when we share it in a different way. And my, my friends who are not believers, they're, they're like, so wait, tell me again. You, you, you felt God telling you to do this, but you don't have a plan. And you asked if I was nervous, Raymond, I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I, this, this is the biggest leap I've ever taken in my career. But, but it is, this is the heart of the blue flame message that if you're meant to do something and you're meant to share in a certain way, the best thing you can do is let God lead you down the path and leave the results up to him. Well, explain the image of the blue flame to people who might not understand that. Why not a white flame or a red flame? Okay. Well, I didn't come up with the term. It was actually a friend of mine who first introduced me to it. And you know, the blue flame is the hottest part of the flame. And when you use these mm -hmm. God-given gifts, essentially what you're doing is you're becoming the person who God intended you to be. You are becoming the truest version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it, this image resonates with so many people, is that, that just like the, the blue part of the flame is the hottest part of the flame, when, when you use this your most sacred gifts, you become the truest, most pure version of yourself. Hmm. You, you offer help to, to readers to find their blue flame, and you tell them, grab a pen and seven cocktail napkins, and then you ask them to write down uh, answers to several questions and to dedicate three minutes to each of, each of these questions. Now, some of the questions you suggest are the following. List all the times you felt truly alive. What is something your friends hate to do that you love to do? And what are some occasions when you've helped another person. Did you go through this exercise? I did, and I've done it with many friends. And it usually was on cocktail napkins, although a lot of us don't have paper products right now. So maybe people are writing on their hands when they do it. Chalk, chalk on the on the children's chalkboard that you're homeschooling them on. You can use that as well, I guess. Yeah. How, how does the writing exercise help unlock uh, one's true calling? Because I, I think that what holds so many of us back is our fears. It, it's terrifying. It, for example, if music is your blue flame, if singing, giving back to the world in that way is your passion, it's terrifying to imagine putting yourself out there. What if people make fun of you? What if they say you're no good at this? 
And the idea of sitting down and making these lists for three minutes and not stopping is that eventually, just to fill that time, you will end up getting really honest with yourself about what your God-given gifts really are. You have a title, uh, the, the chapter title, uh, Blow It Up. It made me think of that Sondheim song. You know that, do, do you know Sunday in the Park with George? Do you know that musical? Only, but I'm not as cultured as you are, Raymond, but you know, if, if no. you want to talk about like a Real Housewives episode, I might be more familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. You see, I don't watch that. But the, the, you, you will love this. You should look it up. It's a song called Move On, and it comes at the end of Sunday in the Park with George. And, and the, there's a lyric that, and I, I thought of this as I read your book, stop wondering where you're going, move on. You know, you, uh, let others make uh, that decision. You know, they usually do you know, about whether you succeed or not. You write about how you and your husband uh, made a huge lifestyle change many times before. For our viewers sitting at home itching to find their blue flame, but uneasy about it, particularly in the midst of this pandemic, what do you say? I mean, you've got six kids, you're blowing the radio thing up. This has to be traumatic for you all. <laughs> well, you know what? I think the kids are used to it at this point. They accepted a long time ago that their parents are crazy. But one of the things mm -hmm. that goes with that chapter that I talk about in the book is that blowing it up, making these big changes, using your blue flame, it's going to work out that there are different speeds of life and levels of pressure that different people like to live under. So my husband and I happen to be the kind of people who tend to thrive with big challenges and big pressure. Whereas a friend of mine, you know, Raymond, what she's been doing, her blue flame, she's gotten into cookie decorating. So she's been making funny cookies with silly messages and dropping them off to her neighbors to, to during this pandemic, but she's a little bit introverted. So for her, that's blowing things up. For her, that is being crazy, actually knocking on neighbor's <laughs> doors, dropping off these cookies. So for her, that's what it looks like to blow it up. For me, it's leaving a daily two hour talk radio show with a national platform that provided benefits for my whole family in the middle of a pandemic. So, you know, different levels of pressure we all like. I'll say, OK, what, what happens next? Are you going to go on the comedy tour? And how do you do that when many of these theatrical venues might not be open till the end of the year, maybe next year? So, so that was my big plan. When I first discerned this, I felt like I was meant to connect with my fans more through this comedy touring. And that was my original inspiration to leave Sirius XM. So when everything mm -hmm. got shut down, I assumed that, that God would kind of withdraw that call so to speak, that it would be like, oh, just kidding, the, the whole quit your job thing. Actually, don't do that. I, I had no idea that was coming. But instead, the call persisted. And so I, <laughs> I should have a more professional answer. I'm just going to be totally honest, Raymond. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of yeah. still figuring it out. Well, that's where we all are. We're all figuring it out. You stumble and you and you bumble along until you figure out what the calling was. You know, uh, years ago, Father Benedict Rochelle told me, who was a, uh, a great Franciscan friar, he was uh, my spiritual director for a little bit of time in New York, and he used to say, you, you only have a flashlight, and that flashlight only illuminates the next step. It doesn't show down the path, and it certainly doesn't extend to the end. So you have to go one step at a time. It's the way it is. So that's trusting Providence, and I'm glad to see you and your blue flame are, Jennifer Fulweiler. And we certainly wish you the best. Stay in touch. I hope you will. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's an adventure, right? Yeah, that's right. And you, and, you, and you make it fun. Your blue flame, drop the guilt and do what makes you come alive by Jennifer Fulweiler is available now at bookstores everywhere and online. Visit her website, jenniferfulweiler.com. Bye, Jen. Stay safe and get out on that. Thank you so much. It was great to be here. Thank you. See you soon.